Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Much from Bra as the name of the channel can already tell you. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy that you are here. If you're a new subscribe, if you're a new viewer, please do me the favor of subscribing. If you are a returning viewer and you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and let grow the channel. And I'm so happy that my channel is almost at 3K. We have about 2.9 subscribers. So this is making me so happy. And in that same vein, let me take this opportunity to um apologize to my subscribers and my viewers we've been looking forward to content over the past month it's just been a lot of things happening at the same time and i've just been overwhelmed and i know i already had scheduled videos but i just wasn't in a space where i could promote them and some of them weren't really uh, appropriate given the things that are happening in my life so i had had to research some and push them up a bit further because then they wouldn't be really appropriate and nobody would really understand that i already pre-recorded and already uh, scheduled them for them to come so and then that that is done i just want to say thank you so much and thank you for everyone for their passions who's been reaching out to my email i'm getting up to re replying to each and every one of you it's just gonna take me a little bit of more time given what i've just already said what is happening in my life now in today's video i'm just gonna talk about what i wish you knew before a children before becoming a children accountant or what they won't tell you about becoming a children accountant i am i being one of them like i glorify or over glorify the fact of being a children accountant which is rightfully so children accountants i feel like are people that are meant to be glorified whatever that i'm doing but i just think um me and fellow content creators and everyone else, we tend to then sort of die down or water down the downsides or the not so nice parts of becoming a children accountant. And now to celebrate three months of me being a children accountant, I have put together a video of what I wish I knew or what nobody told me. Now this video is going to cover what I wish I knew and what nobody told me. And it's not going to cover the obvious things like um, how much of a confidence booster being a children accountant is uh the bag the roles i'm not going to cover that because we've already talked about that and why you should be a children accountant blah 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 so today we're just going to talk about the things that i wish i knew so the first thing that i'm going to i, I wish i knew is that becoming a children accountant or qualifying as a children accountant is not the end to me when i was thinking about it you know when you're trying to make yourself feel uh, get energy, uh, continue with your commitment of uh, what do you want to do, like being a children accountant felt like it was the goal or it was the end of the war or it was making it. But after qualifying, I then realized being a children accountant is not the end, it's actually a beginning. Because I just remember when we say that being a children accountant is going to open so many doors for you. It's going to be a beginning because now you need to think about which door am I going into? What am I going to do from this point going forward with your life? And I just feel like that part is just not emphasized enough. There are a lot of decisions, your career, where you're going to stay. You're even going to need a whole new vision board because like your old, your old vision board had up to you becoming a teacher accountant. But nobody talks about what happens after the day you qualify. What do you, what road do you go into? What do you then do? What happens to you? Nobody talks about it enough. And I just feel like it's made feel like once you become a teacher accountant, it's the end. But it's really not the end, but it's really another beginning. Then the other thing that I absolutely don't like is that there is no end to the hours. You know, sometimes when we're in Form 6, people will be like, Shingirira, Shingirira, at university, you will need to, to to study that much and at the same time that's the same thing with being a children accountant it just feels like you're putting in all this effort because you want the end goal you want to be a children accountant and then after that life is going to come back to normal but there really is no end to the long hours you work and work and work even after you become a children accountant uh if you follow my instagram if you don't this is the right time to follow you would know that on the day that my stove and my fridge were delivered was delivered uh in my house at around four and i was at work until eight so it just just doesn't, didn't make sense to me to say i've already qualified but i'm still working so many hours i'm still working 12 13 hours a day now this depends on what role do you then go into and also this i think sort of also tends to correlate with the kind of compensation or the bag that comes with the roles the roles that actually do pay the way people glorify around here are the roles that will real that you realize that there is no end to the all to the to the long hours then the third thing is not all cas are the same it's different from you know when you when you qualify when you 
when you finish your A-level, you're going to university. If you have 12 points, everyone with 12 points can go get that program that you want. Uh, after university, you're a graduate, uh, and then you're going to other roles. So yeah, being a CA is actually like being a graduate. Not all CAs are the same, and not all people will turn out the same. Some will be very good CAs. Some will be CAs that are average. Now, if you don't want to be average, there is need to map your own path in terms of what career do you then get into? What roles do you go into? And when do you get into those roles? How are you going to get into those roles? What kind of compensation are you willing to take? What kind of career are you willing to be working on? So those kind of things, I just wasn't ready for it. I thought once you become a CA, we're all at par, the same opportunities are coming to us. But I realized that although those opportunities come, for example, um, you still need to do an interview. You're still going to need to present yourself. You need you're going to need to prove yourself you're going to need not all CAs are the same you are going to determine what kind of chartered accountant you want to be so there really is not going to be an end to the hard work that you put into it because um you have to put in the work for you to be outstanding there is no once you're a CA you're a CA you're a CA uh then the other thing which I wish I knew was you will need to wom to woman up or you need to men up whatever you are now this i don't mean it in a bad way or in a good way i don't even know what way i mean it but i sort of knew you know once you qualify you're no longer a student you're going to get into these roles but i don't think i was ready for the sort of womaning up that i would need to do in terms of the roles that i would get into you need to you need to grow especially if you're going to go to industry industry akunama babies you need to grow up and you need to start acting like a grown person and that I don't think it was ever emphasized enough to say you're not um you're not a child anymore you are you are a woman now you're expected to make the decisions to make the hard calls when people can't make their decisions they're going to come to you when people need their hard code to be made they're going to come to you that part wasn't really part of the, <laughs> the description that i had in my mind then the other thing is the last thing that i'm going to talk about before what i wish i knew was there actually is a right and a wrong time to leave the firm um there's such a thing as overstaying in the firm there's such a thing as not staying long enough and finding that balance of when is it um, that you when is the right time to leave the firm is going to be very good for you or what is the right time to go into industry or to whatever it's going to be a very key decision that you will need to make you and your mentors or whoever comes into your decision making process and I just wasn't I just hadn't th thought about it like that. Now, this is going to be another video of, um, I already recorded the video of when is the right time to leave the firm, but I think it's going to air sometime in November. So, for now, I'll just end this video here. I don't want it to be too long, but just wanted to chat, chit chat with you guys and just give you a three months update of, is it absolutely worth it? Yes, it is absolutely worth it. I don't regret it. I love that I did this and I recommend it to everyone. But are there things that I wish I knew? Yes, like the things that I've just been giving. I've just been giving you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It helps with the algorithm. It helps it reach out to people like you. And um, I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be next week. I'm not going to do two weeks this time because it's going to be week, 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 so that we get all this content that was meant to go out this year out before the year ends. Bye.